Hi, Jeremy Blake here from Reality Training, and here is my short webinar on how to coach yourself. So here we go. Clunk. That's better. Right, there's the title, How to Coach Yourself. So folks, um, in under 15 minutes, I'm going to give you what I have got from my life in coaching. I've been coaching people for probably about five years without a qualification and for about 18 months with a qualification. I went and studied with the AOEC in London and read some books, took some courses, various assessments, learned lots and realized I had a bit of an ability for it, but I didn't have a lot of the uh, wonderful experience of people who've been doing it for some years and various exercises, methods, um, all sorts of wonderful stuff that you look into and you can explore further following your course, things like Gestalt theory, which I rate very highly. Um, lots of good stuff to look into. So anyway, how to coach yourself. I coach, um, in fact, I've coached, I added, totted it up about 75 people now I've coached in the last 18 months. And some of these are for large corporate clients. Some of them are for much smaller clients. And some of them are one-to-ones, people who just engage me. So there's two types, really. Stakeholder coaching, where they have a stakeholder who's investing in the coaching for them. And then there's, you know, personal engagement where somebody just says, coach me. I'm not a life coach, although, of course, life comes into it. I am what you call technically an executive coach, helping people with their work. And of course, there's always a work-life balance involved because people have lives and they don't dramatically change their character when they come to work. And if they do, that's something to coach. So let's kick off how to coach yourself. So this is my experience of coaching, but also my experience of being a human being, working in sales and marketing and management and leadership for 20 odd years. And before that, having a career in sales and marketing and acting. So here we go, how to coach yourself. So number one, make time and space. So you need to be alone because um, you're not coaching with another person. You need to be free. Let others know where you are and that you'll see them in 30 minutes. Um, I'm reason I put that in here is I'm thinking of myself with my three children. Dad, um, no, I disappeared, guys. Back with you in 30, 45, however long you need it to be. Organize tech to be off. Um, so if you have got phones, mute them, hide them, put them away, as he does on the spur. Um, so very important that you have some time and space to do this, um, which can be hard for people who don't have a lot of space, but they do have a lot of time. So the second point is, or the final point is, as you begin, you put away, quite often physically away from you, if it helps, things that you cannot affect now. Um, do that physically, and then the first part of coaching is mentally. I cannot do anything about this for this period of time. I'm pulling the handbrake on my existence. I'm coaching myself, so let me consider um, only affect what I can affect, which is this time of coaching me. Next up is you're listening and you're tuning into yourself. You're not listening to another person. You're not coaching, you're coaching yourself. Here's a picture of the wonderful Manchester Library where I was recently. So you're listening, you're tuning into yourself, read yourself. So what's bothering you? Um, what's coming to the fore of things? How are you feeling? Um, you know, all of these questions, what are you occupied with? What's what's busying your mind? And that's the first point. Make no judgment. You're just tuning in. Really, you're just tuning into yourself. Then having done some awareness and listening in, you're asking for some clarity. And here's a lovely painting by Elliot Hodgkin, um, who had an exhibition not long ago, or his works at, at uh, Wadston, a national trust place down the road. And funnily enough, this is one of his most popular paintings of lemons. And the question is this. Um, oh, they're in the wrong order. When life gives you lemons and life has given you lemons currently, um, your lemons are where you are. You're at home. You are self immersing. You are self isolating. You are there. So what are you going to do with what you've got currently? And that's really the big question. Be clear. What can I do? What can I affect? Where's the squeeze coming from to continue our lemon theme? Is it from somebody else or is it from me? Where am I putting pressure on myself? Is there a squeeze? Do I need a squeeze? Maybe I do. And the thing that's beginning to emerge in you that you think you should be getting on with, what makes this a priority? So this is your period of coaching yourself, getting some clarity. Then we move on to asking to think and challenge the Spartacus moments. So how does this thing that I'm considering doing and getting involved with, I'm thinking about this, how does this engage my energy and focus? 
because we know that where our energy goes, our focus goes. On a scale of one to 10, how much value will this bring? Is this a good thing for me to get involved in? I may not have decided what I'm gonna do. I may still be thinking about it, but is there a, is there a definite, uh, you know, is, is it worth bothering about? And if I hit a number six, what else can I add to raise the number higher? So what else could I add to this idea, add to this action, this strategy, this thing I'm thinking of doing, which of course may involve other people, but you know, what, what can I add to it? Then what are you gonna do? Now I'm gonna miss Wimbledon, highly likely being announced this week. I managed to go every year with my dear mate, Mig, whose father was a top player. We take a number of children every year. It's a glorious day. Um, and I take far too many photos when I'm there. So here's um, a player whose name I forget, who plays with Yonix. I apologies to him. What am I going to be serving up? So I'm going to be doing something. What am I going to be serving up? And then who is going to be receiving value from me? Is it something for me? Is it something for my family, something for my friends, colleagues, customers, suppliers, partners? Because let's face it, you can help a lot of people in lots of different ways. So who's going to receive some value from me? And how, by doing this, do I change the game? How can I change the game? What I'm doing, does it change the game? And how can I change the game? Again, the only pay person um, whose behavior you can affect now is your own. And you've got to affect what you can affect. And it's your behavior you're in control of. So what are you serving up? Who's going to get this value? And how are you changing the game? A final sort of question before you make any commitments, which you may well write down, is why bother? What's the outcome? What's the end game? What's the objective? What's the goal? All these kind of words. Um, so who am I going to be connecting with and connecting with deeper through these um, actions that I'm going to take? And how are things going to be better in a week, a month? It could be a short term goal, could be a longer term goal. And ultimately, what's the new and valuable relationships I'm going to get from this, the habits that are going to come from this, results that are going to be developed. And this was recently when I was in London visiting a friend in Rika, who runs a church's um, place down in London. This is the statue, um, of course, of Roosevelt with Churchill. So their relationships, it's just a, a lovely image of this bench where lots of people like to sit. So what's the outcome? What's going to What's going to come from this? Um, reflect. So my dear old friend, Cy Crow, who's taught me this initially some years ago that I, I really hardly ever reflected. I just lived in now all the time. And of course, if you don't reflect, you can't change your now. So reflecting is so important. How do I feel now? How do I feel now? I've gone through some thinking. Uh, what's changed in me? And what insights have I gained into my character, my current habits, my current behaviors? And there's a picture of our gorgeous cat, Chloe. Cats seem to be reflecting about 20 hours of the day currently. Um, clearly, we're seeing our pets, if those of us who have them, uh, more than we often do. So I've done that incredibly quickly. Now, you're in control of this webinar. You can go back, move the, move the dial at any point to replay things. So let's have them from the top. You're making time for space and awareness. You're, uh, you're making time and space for your coaching. You're listening for awareness. Then you're asking for clarity, asking yourself the questions. You're asking to think and challenge yourself. What am I going to do? And why should I bother? What's the real outcome? Then reflect. So if you want some more support, we've got other resources for you. You can get more free things off Reality Trainings, Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, there is our blogs. We do some slightly more considered writing fortnightly. We write uh, articles about sales, service, leadership, management, marketing, these sorts of things, business related um, behaviors, habits, effects. Uh, we've got two YouTube channels, Reality Training Films and Reality Training TV. And our third edition of our book, The Perfect Storm, 30 Ways to Drive Your Business is out now. If you'd like a sample chapter, the whole chapter on coaching, just email me for that, um, jeremy at realitytraining.com. If you have any inquiries, whether it's coaching, consultancy, training, development, um, get in touch with Anne. So if you don't remember my email and you want the coaching chapter, email Anne at realitytraining.com. You can ring us 01580 So I hope the How to Coach Yourself has been useful and gets you testing it out. That's all I ask you to do is to test it out. So thank you very much. You've had Jeremy Blake, Reality Training.
onwards and upwards.